<laughs> Papito Vinny, this video's for you, Papito. Hi, Vinny. It's um, August 16th. Um, 2018? Yes. Uh, y hoy fui al doctor. <laughs> fui al doctor y me dijeron que tenía que venir al hospital. Y aquí estoy. Y nos dijeron que vas a llegar muy pronto. Estamos muy emocionadas. Muy felices de, de verte, de conocerte. Y um, has estado conmigo en esta, en esta aventura. Y te quiero decir gracias por, por todo lo que me has enseñado ya tan pronto. Y espero que un día yo también pueda enseñarte muchas cosas. Um, ya te queremos muchísimo. Te amamos y no puedo esperar hasta que te tengan mis brazos. Oh. Hi, papito. Can't wait to meet you, my little love muffin. You're all mine. We're so excited, papa. I can't wait. Your gifts we've been waiting for for a long time. And and I feel so blessed to, to see your little face some sometime real soon, Papa. You're gonna be here real soon and we just can't wait and our lives are gonna change forever. And, and we just love you so much already, Papas. You, mommy, mommy and I are uh, just could not be happier that you're our precious little boy. Bless us forever, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could both say that there was never a question that we wanted to be parents. We just didn't know when that would happen. And in the journey, we knew that there was going to be some hurdles and a lot of healing that needed to take place. <laughs> it's, a, it's a roller coaster, guys. <laughs> so our struggle, yeah, so, you know, um, we we experienced uh, quite a quite a lot, and we we had a uh, very strong relationship. Uh, we were uh, both on the same page, knowing that we both wanted to be parents together. Um, that was not a question, but the question for us at the time, or at least for me more than Shelly maybe, was when I felt uh, and thought that we had control of uh, of the timing because we had doctors and medicine and science and everything we needed to do uh, to make that happen. So being that I thought we had control over the time, I thought we should wait and get things more organized, you know, uh, financially and uh, fine tune our, our communication skills with each other, you know, uh, go through some growing pains to uh, iron out so that when we did become parents, we would be um, very, very good examples for our, for our babies. So little did we know that uh, it was going to be quite a journey and quite a struggle. We were uh, shocked after the first, well, shocked after the third time maybe, <laughs> disappointed after the first and the second, and, and as, the, uh, as the attempts continued um, without success, and later being told that Shelly had unexplained infertility because everything was fine, everything was working, there was no reason uh, for it not to work, um, did we become set back on our heels and emotionally and financially uh, started to really question a lot. Um, it really rocked our relationship. And it, was, uh, it was quite a journey. We, we, went through some real turmoil, unfortunately, during that time as well, after maybe the second or third time of not having any success, uh, just the high and low of the excitement of the thought and then the disappointment of, for some reason, unexplained, it's not working. Um, Shelly experienced some losses in her family. She started losing some loved ones that were very close to her, her grandfather, her uncle, uh, a father figure, um, many, many uh, relatives uh, in a very short period of time. And so that kind of caused a, a depression and uh, was not, was uh, difficult. It was difficult in our relationship. And um, so it was uh, shortly after that, well, not shortly, but it, it was, what, about two years, a year or two, 
of uh, some emotional turmoil, and we decided to put a pause on trying. One day at lunchtime, I opened my laptop, um, and I had the face screen, Facebook, uh, a screen pop up with a post uh, from an LGBT group that I belong to that I've been a part of for years, but never had anyone post anything from California. Um, and it was during my lunch, so I see this post that, oh, we have this great fertility doctor, and I noticed they're from California, and I reached out to them right away, um, and called the clinic, made an appointment without even consulting with Bernie, and uh, we ended up going that around the same time. Uh, sure enough, this is a picture of Bernie holding the vial and us praying right before the procedure, and what was so special about this is that Bernie was a part of every part of it. It wasn't just science and medical procedure. It was, this was our journey together and it was very personal and our doctor embraced that. And up there you'll see a, a little prayer that I prayed almost every night and you'll also see a 31 days of prayer during infertility because I, I use those as a guide. Every day I would look up a Bible scripture and write and reflect. Um, um, and ask God questions. I had this very intimate relationship with God and continue, you know, as we are parents now, uh, it is a everyday learning, new learning experience. And this is us, very pregnant. Um, this is uh, the day that he came in, he, uh, he, that I delivered, that we delivered, and it was August 18th. It says, uh, this is Psalm 139. You are a child of God. You are wonderfully made, dearly loved, and precious in His sight. And so now we're going to have Bernie going to talk about, I know we've cited a lot of Bible verses, but like I said, our journey has been a total spiritual one and definitely <laughs> um, have a lot, a lot of verses that have inspired us. But this one is the one that we want to share uh, for today and the type of parent, parents we want to be and our, 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 our future. He wants the microphone. Yes, the godly walk with integrity, blessed are their children, follow them. So this is a verse that um, Shelly brought to my attention uh, somewhat recently, but it really uh, summarizes uh, where where I'm at and uh, what we've been, been experiencing lately. Um, the process of becoming pregnant, you know, for Chelly and, and I, uh, I, that was kind of, I was along for the ride. Uh, but after Vicente was born and I watched him be born and I was able to cut his umbilical cord and, and bond with him, um, once, uh, once that, that love, uh, was uh, sprung on me, my journey began, and it's an adventure, it's an adventure, and it's a challenge, I mean, uh, my mind is blown with the growth and the thoughts that would never have been uh, in my head until after uh, having a baby, um, so it's a challenge, and it really is my heart's desire to uh, stay close to God and be, be uh, under His protection so that we can um, be a good example and that he can grow up knowing that he's a child of God and that he's loved and he's blessed and that um, God is gracious, God is faithful and, uh, and that God made him and that he was very much loved before he was birthed and, and uh, after and that he has an eternal, eternal life through, through Jesus. So. Well, we, uh, we love our son. We sent the Emmanuel and I hired that and blue Emmanuel. Because during my pregnancy, I promised God. I said, you know, I know that he will be, if I have a boy, you know. And, and it wasn't so much a promise. It was just this thing that I just felt like, uh, this, this desire to name him that. Because that's what he would be, is a gift. And knowing that God was a part of my entire journey. Yeah, yeah God made this possible. And uh, we... You, so much I wanted to be ready, and I've learned through this process that you're never ready. And but God is gonna, God is gonna provide, and God is gonna, God is gonna prepare you to to make it through. You know, He's He's with us in the good times and the bad times, and uh, and all the struggles that God God is with us through all the seasons. And um, it's it's quite a challenge. Uh, it's quite a challenge. Every day is new, huh? Um, 
when you are responsible for another human. <laughs> so. Courtney said the other day, if I could sum it up, it's like wearing your heart, oh, yeah. wearing your heart outside because outside it's so your chest. outside your chest, being a parent because it's something that's so valuable and so cherished and so vulnerable and so scary and yet you know it's so beautiful and anything else? Yeah, I mean, imagine we're running around this world with your heart outside your chest. I mean, we have a rib cage. We have these rib cages, you know, protecting our heart. And here, when you're a parent, it's literally like your heart is outside for the rest of your life. Uh, as long as you, you have this gift, you, you have this uh, vulnerability that is precious. And it, and it blows my mind, too, now, because I, uh, I see other people, you know, and, and, and I know that they have... A parent, so they have a, a father, a mother, they have a parent who, to them, their child is gold. They're they're precious. There's no greater gift, and so it's amazing to know that um, that's how God sees us. You know, um, each and every one of us is very, very, very precious. You know, uh, God's the ultimate ultimate parent and um, and the creator, and so to know that I have this immense love for this one human being that blows my mind to know that you know God loves us this way and that we are also going through this world with with loved ones that you know mothers fathers who care for us that way as well it just encourages me to you know extend that love and, and, and kindness to all humanity you know we're all very very precious people in closing in closing, we have a, a prayer that a friend wrote to us, and I asked for permission to share it. So, uh, I believe we still have a song after this, correct? Okay, but, so, this isn't, this is a thank you. A thank you note from our friend Andrea Medina to other mothers. Thank you mothers, grandmothers, daughters, sisters, friends. To the mothers who continue to heal and grow, to be the best version of themselves for their children. To those who reach out to other mothers those who are no longer with their mothers, to those who want to be mothers, to those who have a difficult relationship with their children, and those who have them being raised with their mothers, to, their, to the women who decide not to be mothers and love in other ways, to those who are mothers without having given birth, to those who create links with that instinct. Thank you for the lives you fill with your love. Thank you for your endurance. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your time.